Critics, welcome to week two of our journalistic writing unit. I hope you, hope you all had a great weekend and that you had time to relax, to enjoy time with your family and just have a bit of fun. Now, I've started off with this quote because it was quite poignant. I was reading it um, online and I thought, actually, this will be something I'd love to share with you. So the quote reads, let us remember one book, one pen, one child and one teacher can change the world. So basically through this, I just want to say no matter where we are, no matter the fact that we are at home, you are at home, we're not in school, I'm still able to teach you and you are still able to learn. And so I just think it's wonderful that we're living in this world of technology where we can share I can share the teaching with you and you can share your learning with me. And I think it's amazing. So I think we can still change the world, even if we're doing homeschooling. OK, right. Let's move on to our lesson. We're going to start off with our guided reading. But first of all, you will need for today's lesson, chapter four of your text, chapter four of the to do's, an exercise book or lined paper, a pencil, a pen a ruler and lots of focus. So pause the video here while you go and collect those items. OK, so today is Monday, the 4th of May 2020, and our guided reading LI is to show an understanding of the text. So I want you to pause the video and write the LI and the date in your books. OK, so today's chapter brings the first three chapters of the story together and the characters too. You're going to see that they meet for the first time today and there is quite a cliffhanger of an ending. So I think it's quite a, it's quite a good chapter and I actually really enjoyed reading it. So your first task is to read chapter four and complete the multiple choice questions um, to do task. And you need to submit your work. I've seen some really good scores and I want that to continue and I want to see lots more. So pause the video here, go ahead and read that chapter and do the to do task and then come back to join me shortly. OK, now you've handed your work in. We are now going to do our comprehension task. So here's your task. We have five questions and you need to go through the text to find the answers, use evidence from the text to support your work and try and answer your sentences in as full as you can. If you can think of more than one answer for each question, then put that in as well. Remember, as we've said, number five is always an opinion. Uh, in this case, it's actually said for number five that you need to find evidence from the text. So it's really, really important that you do that for this chapter um, and for this question. Please remember to send your work to our email address. I've received lots of photos of grammar work and I really appreciate it and um, guided reading work. I really, really appreciate it. It's brilliant to see um, how you're getting on and the work that you're doing. So pause the video here, have a read of those questions, write them in your uh, the answers in your books and we'll move on to the next slide shortly. OK, so hope you found that kind of okay not too difficult I know a couple of the questions maybe the end one might have been a little bit tricky but I'm hopeful that it's okay and you managed quite well so let's go through the answers number one why was Ethel thinking of buying herself a badge or some ribbons in the suffragette colors so she felt it was right to support the suffragettes so as we saw in the previous chapter she had learnt from the mistress that Actually, the suffragettes are someone that's a group of people that are really um, important and their message is very important to women. And so now she's decided that actually she really does love like the suffragettes and what they stand for. And she wants to wear the ribbons to show her support. Question two. The mistress has allowed her to finish her duties early and Ethel could not help feeling pleased and a little bit proud that they now shared a secret. Why did Ethel's mistress allow her to finish work early? 
So again, remember, Ethel and her mistress do have quite a good relationship. And although Ethel is her maid, she doesn't treat her as one. It's almost like they have a nice friendship. So I think that even though the mistress wasn't allowed to leave, remember, she was locked in a cupboard at that point. OK, she wasn't allowed to leave the house to attend the meeting. However, Ethel had obviously told her that she wanted to go and see Violet Vane. And so the mistress said, you know what, I can't go, but why don't you go? And maybe she wanted her to find out some more information about the suffragette protest as well. So that meant that she was able to go earlier. Number three, give two reasons why the children couldn't enter the Palladium via the stage door. Because they didn't have a ticket, number one. And secondly, security guard wouldn't let them. OK, number four, George heaved one of the bins out of the way and reached over to a window that was slightly open. What does the word heaved tell you about the bin? So when you heave something, you're using a lot of strength in order to move it. So this therefore suggests that it was heavy. OK, and it, it caused it made him use a lot of energy to push it. George is more of a risk taker than Ethel or Marcus. Find evidence from the chapter to prove that this statement is true. So George is the one who suggested climbing through the window to go and see Violet Vane. And he's already made up an excuse. He said to them, if someone catches us, we'll just say we got lost. So he's obviously quite a risk taker. He knows the kinds of things that you need to say to get out of a sticky situation. OK, so mark that work, please. Tick it, correct it, add in extra things that you need and then email it to us so we can see how you got on. OK, so now we're going to move on to our English lesson for today and we are looking at how to use effective vocabulary to create engaging headlines. And by the end of the lesson, you should be able to identify an effective headline and understand the importance of using humour and wordplay in headlines. So I want you to pause the video here, underline the date and the LI. You do not need to write the success criteria. And can I also remind you that your grammar for today is on a separate video that Mr Lewis has done and your emails that arrived this morning from myself We'll have the link of that grammar video on there. So your grammar is a separate activity today. OK, so although we've done this before and we've looked at headlines, I think it's really important that we just go over it again to check that you all understand how important headlines are and how you can write a really effective one. So what is a headline? Why is it such an important feature of newspaper reports? So the main function of a headline is to attract the reader and make them want to read the article. A headline needs to be snappy and summarise the story in a few words. Often headlines have puns, which is a play on words, often using homophones. This is quite a difficult task and headline writers are usually very skilled in English and in writing. OK, so it actually takes quite a witty person to be able to write really good headlines. So here are two examples that I found. The first one is budget billions to beat the virus and the other one is women win the right to vote in suffragette victory. So those are two headlines from real newspapers and they're real headlines. I want you to look at both of them and I want you to write down in your books what makes them effective headlines and write down your ideas in regards to the technical devices that we've used. We're going to go through those in a minute, so I'm not going to go through what those technical devices are. But think about when you're doing writing, especially narrative or poetry. What type of devices do you use for that? And have you seen that in these headlines? So pause the video here and complete that short task. OK, so let's go through some of the literary devices that we can use to make our headlines more effective. So number one. We talked briefly, but puns are usually um, use homophones to create humour in a newspaper headline. So remember, homophones are words that sound the same, but are spelt differently and mean different things. So, for example, one headline I've seen is, so what, ask clothes manufacturers. The so is S-E-W, which is to do with sewing. But actually what they're saying is, they're trying to use that instead of the word so, S-O. So, so what, ask clothes manufacturers. So if you can see, there's a homophone there as a play on words there. Then we've got piece of cake. Obviously, piece is changed 
it should be P-I-E-C-E -E for piece of cake, but this is this means peace as in um, peace and quiet. Again, we've got so, so it's time. Barefaced liars, Christmas shoppers stocking up. So you've got stockings there. And which Halloween costume is for you? So again, a play on words on which there. Okay, number two. Play on words. Now, this is when a writer will change a letter or a part of the word to give a double meaning. So, for example, instead of struck by lightning, they're written truck by lightning. And that was a story about a truck that was struck by lightning. Tantastic and a jab well done. So a jab is like a uh, needle, like an injection. So they were talking about vaccinations in that article. So a jab well done instead of a job well done. So you can see the play on words there. And the last one is alliteration. And we all know what alliteration is. It's the repetition of the first sound of a word in three consecutive words. So sending up the stars and stripes. You've got the repetition of the S. The greedy girl gobbles gruel. So you've got the G and then big bad bear bites boy. You've got alliteration all the way through that headline as well. OK, so three devices that we're really going to work hard on to use. And you have used them before when we were creating headlines in the autumn term. So this should be kind of just a recap for you. OK, so your first task is to have a look at five different headlines, either on the Internet or in the newspaper. There are lots and lots of headlines everywhere, all over the Internet. I want you to copy down the headlines in your books and a short summary of what the article is about and then write down the literary techniques that have been used. So this is an example of one that I've done. So I've chosen the headline that I had in the previous slide. Budget billions to beat the virus. So this is my chosen headline. Budget billions to beat the virus. I've written that in my book. Then I'm going to say the article is about the government budgeting billions of pounds to help businesses and the NHS in the battle to beat the coronavirus. Unintentional alliteration there in that sentence. But that is what I need. Just one sentence to say a very quick summary of what the article is about. And then the headline has used alliteration, which makes it engaging for the reader. So that's the technical um, literary, technical literary device that has been used there. OK, and when you're done, you need to send that to the year six email address and um, pause the video here so you can continue. So you've got the example there for you. I want to see five different headlines with an explanation of the article and the literary technique that's used. OK, now moving on to the next task, I hope you found that one really um, enjoyable, actually researching and looking for headlines. I'm purposely not going to go through any answers with you now because I want you to send me your work so I can see it for myself. OK, so number two, have a look at the pictures below. Your task is to create a headline for each picture. See if you can use a range of literary techniques in your headlines. You can research online for some inspiration. So if you have a look, there's four very different pictures. You've got a car that has been um, stuck in the floods. So basically water's just um, come like is flooded and the car has completely submerged in the water. You've got a flying spaceship UFO in the sky. You've got a house that's on fire and you've got a cat who is working on a laptop. So you can choose any headlines you want for those four pictures. OK, so I hope you have enjoyed those two tasks and the lesson for today. And I want you to make sure you send us all of your work, please, so we can check it and give feedback. Now, this is the final challenge that I want you to do. So we obviously are going to be writing a article about suffragettes. So I want you to have a look at these pictures. These are real pictures taken from the time when the suffragettes were protesting. And I want you to think of some headlines, about four headlines that you could use for your newspaper article on suffragettes. So this is a helping hand for you so that when we come to writing our article in a, a few lessons time, you will be able to start off with a catchy headline. Now, I'm happy to give feedback and tips on email or on Purple Mash to help you with that. So please send us your ideas and then we can say, yes, this is a good one or no. We think you can change it a little bit. Maybe you want to ask an opinion and say, which one out of these four, Miss, would you choose? So whatever you would like to do, let's keep the communication going. OK, 
Remember to use as much alliteration, puns and wordplay as you can. And I look forward to seeing your work. I'll see you tomorrow.